Let's start and talk about the collaboration with, with Design Dub and your first African, you know, African-inspired collection. What was the thinking behind choosing, you know, choosing an African collection now in, in terms of African design, different aspects of African design and how it piqued your interest? We've actually been looking at the, you know, the creativity coming out of uh, Africa or the different countries of Africa for a lot of years right now. And what's happening in music, in fashion, and now architecture and product design. And I think this very manifesto during this festival says it all. A lot of things is happening and we would like to tap into that and learn more as a company. And how did the partnership with Design and Dava specifically come about? Sometimes, you know, uh, work even for a big company like ours is not so scientific. The starting point for uh, us working together with Design Indaba was actually me meeting uh, with Ravi on a, a, a jury for um, what design can do for refugees in Amsterdam. Okay. And then we started off talking about this and he had some exciting ideas and this is the road forward. And then how, do you, how did the designers find that mm. kind of, find that balance in terms of creating exciting new products, um, but also I think ensuring that the finished product does fit and does come in at the right price points in terms of the IKEA market positioning. Because, I mean, it's a, it's a very hard thing. Sometimes it's very hard for creative, for creative people to find the balance between, you know, designing and designing with a theme in mind versus creating a product that, that would fit on mm -hmm. your shelves and your stores. I think you touch on uh, maybe the biggest question for us when it comes to design, because since IKEA, from a vision perspective, uh, we aim for the many people within wallets and big dreams. So for us to make something beautiful but costly is a failure. So that means what we do, we use a formula which we call democratic design, which is represented by the five points here on Marcus' uh, symbol. Uh, and, you know, for, I guess for a lot of people in the audience as well, you know, you can make a beautiful chair, but a chair that is beautiful, comfortable, has the right quality, can stand for the wear and tear in life at home, is made in a sustainable way, and then add that it should be affordable for the many people, is really a very daunting task. So what we do is we, we combine this model with a deep insight and knowledge in supply chain. And one wouldn't work without the other. So it's when we look at materials, production, and every detail in our logistic systems in order to make sure that we drive out unnecessary cost. And that's what we uh, will end up with in this product, uh, project, we hope. True. Yep. So where would you be manufacturing that? Would you be manufacturing that within your normal, your normal manufacturing process? And we have a landscape of actually not so many suppliers. We're about 1,100 suppliers. And what's interesting is we try to have a long-term relationship with them. So we're actually above 11 years in relationship with people that we partner with uh, also from a value perspective. So we, we like to work to, together. We see the same things. But we're also curious. At this moment, we're looking into uh, Africa. We are sourcing um, products and producing in the north uh, part, but we're currently looking into South Africa and other places as well. At this point, we don't know, uh, but we hope that we could do something yeah, from you know, the collection my next, here. My next question is, so when do we get <laughs> IKEA in Africa? Any, yeah. Anywhere on the continent. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> Apparently that should be soon. Unfortunately, time has run out now, so I can't answer that question. It's really a pity. But we're here no. today. Isn't that a good start? <laughs> we're kind of a slow company when it comes to expanding into new markets because we like to take care of what we have first, and then we, we open up about 5% uh, of our turnover will come from new markets every year. And uh, at this moment, we don't have any plan yet. Boo! But we, um, uh, we hope to come back to you uh, in another year or another year to have good news around that. And in terms of the, the collection itself, what are the different themes within the collection? The different themes? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, right now it's everything uh, between a padlock, a series of padlocks, onto, onto uh, you know, a whole housing unit. So the thing that you see down there on the plaza is actually uh, something that Issa an architect who's part of the collection, has done a house, which is like an open source thinking on how, doing, how to do a house. So that's what we're scheduling for. So everything between a padlock and a housing unit. And how many pieces are in the range? It's going to be about 40 pieces. And then that's divided up amongst the, the 10 design, designers and design studios. No, you know what? How we <laughs> like to work within IKEA is to work together. So okay. uh, we, all of the team work together on everything. Then, of course, some of the designers are, are more involved in some of the products, but we share, you know, the, the, the total collection. And have you prototyped it? Is there somewhere we can, we can start to see what's been created? Uh, I think that's, that's why we're here, actually. We are on the prototype level right now. And uh, what you see down there is a live workshop. So every day we're going to workshop and actually do the prototypes here and also redo drawings. Right now, La Duma is uh, doing a lovely carpet. Mm. 
directly on the flooring of the house. I would urge you to go down and see it. Also, we would like to have all of your great ideas. You know, we want to tap into the collective brain of, of this place to see how we could do the stuff better. So come with ideas, give us some feedback on what we're doing. So we can say this is the start of a process as opposed to just a, product, a project with a beginning and an end. It is, and I think also <clears throat> maybe it's the start of, of a way of finding and working with talent from all over Africa. Mm. It's a starting point for us as a company. Maybe we could say also that for, for us, it's, uh, the way we like to work is to work uh, open because we believe in that way of co-creating things. As Marcus was saying, we hope that as many as possible of you would uh, come down and join us. Don't be shy. Come in. Have ideas, opinions. If it is the right ones, we will uh, listen. No? How does it work? <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to listen to the wrong ones also. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. I think let's bring out our designers now. Let's yeah, let's bring it's out like the team. Hey, team. <clears throat> Um, I would like to ask, uh, we also have Joanna, who's from the internal, the in-house IKEA design team. Um, I would like to start with Issa from Ivory Coast. What have you learned in the process in terms of working with IKEA to, and you've also created the, the IKEA house? I guess what was really um, interesting and fascinating with uh, this process is that we do find a lot of similarities when we were working as African designers and when we are working with IKEA, mainly because we feel that uh, the human person is pretty much in the center of what we do. And also in terms of uh, philosophy and process and um, way of working, it's uh, very hands-on and, and close to, to, to the human person. So for us, it was uh, some, somehow a continuation of uh, what we do on a daily basis and how that could uh, sort of permeate a bigger world, you know, especially with industrial production. All right, thank you. And then Joanna, I'd just like to find out from you, what's today been like for you? I mean, you, you come from the, the internal, you know, the in-house design team which is you, you have a different, therefore, perspective on this entire process and this day so far. This is to us a little bit different also because we haven't got ready-made products yet. So we chose to do live prototyping, which I think is a, a new way to, to show off and to also invite people to, to come and chat with us and uh, give us their feedback. So it's been, it's been really nice. Today we had two workshops already and that will be go on for the rest of the week. And um, we have been doing a chair today, cutting a chair and uh, putting it together. We've been working with textiles and um, I've been working with textiles as well today. Brilliant. Yeah, chatting with people. Cool, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you. Please another round of applause for them. Thank you.